It's Thursday. It's 10 p.m. Central Time. It's XFL After Dark with X. Oh, sorry, USFL After Dark with XFL Jim. Sorry, dude. I was jumping the gun, my man. Oh, you're good. You're good. Well, that'll be next year. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, so entertaining week last week for the most part. Um, the Maulers covered, which was probably the sexiest thing in the world. It's However, like every other week they do it. It's it's one of those trends. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this week they're going to get destroyed. Next week they're going to cover. Not not win, though. No, I, I mean, I really hope they win this week. This is like their best opportunity. The Gamblers are as bad of an offense as we've seen. They have a new quarterback. I don't know what's going on. I just I'm 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 a Maulers fan now. Now, I do owe you an apology. Um, I did go to the the Mariano's here, which is the grocery store out here where I live. Believe it or not, they had no Bush Light. That's insane. Uh, but not that insane because my local grocery store was also out when I went to look. So we may have to see. Uh, you know, we'll 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 do it for next week. Um. If that's not there, then we'll have to graduate with, like, do they still make Red Dog? I just bought a six-pack of Schlitz. Hey, you know what? Next next week, if they don't have any Red Dog, I'll get me some Schlitz. There we Rock go. Rock it out, dude. Um, so let's let's just go through your – um. How were there any big movers in your power rankings this week? Not terribly. So the Stallions are still firmly on top. They're the only undefeated team. And then there's kind of like a hierarchy where it's the Stallions, the Breakers, and the Generals. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Stars. And then there's kind of everybody. I'd maybe throw Tampa like right below the Stars. They're kind of in that tier. And then everybody else. Now we talked about it um, earlier today on Spring Fever. For those who don't know, every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Time. Jim and I are going to be talking some spring football and spring fever over on BTV. We're going to be talking about um, US, USFL X League, which I've never even heard of before. It's amazing. Um, seven on seven league, European football, um, Canadian football. And Jim, I'm going to tell you this, dude. There's some stuff I'm in the closet with. There's nothing I like better on a warm Friday night than, cozzle, than co- cozying up on my my sofa and watching a little Canadian Football League. I do love some nice CFL. I mean. It's, it's very fun. So, um, and then we talked uh, the fan-controlled league. Yep. And there's one other league. I met, The one with Glanville. That's what I'm missing. I'm sorry. Oh, MLFB, Major League Football. So, you know, we, um, you know, we cover it all. So if you guys like football, come hang out with Jim and I, you know, we're going to talk a little pig spin. We're also going to be doing some um, college football previews, which I'm ecstatic about. And I'm not going to lie when I sent you the text message and you said, we're going to start out with the Mac. Got a little excited, if you know what I mean. Oh, I'm very, very got, excited. Got a little excited. So Jim and I are going to be going week by week. Um, you know, just breaking down conferences, give you guys some betting ideas, our outlooks for the teams, who's coming back, everything like that. And that's going to start beginning of June. So I'm really looking forward to that. But you guys are here to talk USFL. That was a little preview because Jim and I are, are going to be spending a lot of quality time together, which I'm really looking forward to. A little QT. Um, so my big question to you is, you you said how there's like divisions and Tampa's kind of like in that middle tier. Yeah. Do you think they could figure it out, sneak in up to second place so they make the playoffs? Or is it is it pretty much just a foregone conclusion it's going to be the Stallions and Breakers? There's a chance in the South that they could, but I feel like when we saw them against the Breakers with how the Breakers handled them, it's not likely to happen. Like, maybe, maybe if they play again, they could beat the Stallions. Yeah. But... I just I don't see them getting the wins possible. Like this this league more than any other seems to have like the four playoff teams kind of locked in. Like these are the top teams and they've kind of separated themselves at this point. Now in terms of no we t- 
I mean, if the Maulers don't win this week, they're not going to win at all, are they? I think they play the Gamblers one more time. I think everybody okay. plays each other twice. I'm not exactly sure because there's only 10 weeks. Yeah. There's always a chance. I have to hope. I have to pray. Um, you, can you, off the top of your head, can you guess how many points the Maulers have scored this year? Maybe, maybe they score like 82 the entire season. Points for 39. Oh, like how many they've scored so far? Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought I was oh, going for bad. the whole year. I was my going bad. for the whole my year. Bad. My bad. Yeah, I would have said something around 40. Yeah, I mean, that's that's less than 10 per game. Yeah, they're real bad. Their <laughs> offense is real, real bad. Now, my Michigan Panthers, you talked about it earlier tonight. Is there a quarterback competition going on? Like, what what's what's going to happen in the quarterback room? Is Lynch just done? Is I think Shane I think, Patterson just done? Is Love going to take over? What what's going to happen? So they picked up jo- Josh Love. They picked up Josh Love from the Maulers in uh, uh, on waivers. I I do think Shea Patterson is probably done. Not Shea Patterson. I think Paxton Lynch is probably done just based off of injury. Maybe he comes back like later in the year, okay. but. I, I doubt it at this point. He's probably just going to sit out. Shea Patterson, either he A, gets better because of the competition, or B, he's done. And Josh Love is just the guy. And another Michigan team making a shitty top overall pick. Just the history. The history continues, but hey, at least it wasn't a wide receiver this, t- this exactly. time. Exactly. At, so. at least you had to pick a quarterback. So we got some interesting games this week. You know, you and I have been, you in particular, have been murdering just absolutely murdering these lines. Um, we're going with our friends bet on line today. Um, the first game, we have the Michigan Panthers who are getting two with an over under of 33 and a half. You know what my friend uh, Coach Taylor says? Clear eyes, full hearts can't lose on Friday Night Lights, my friend. This this week's tough. This I'm gonna I'm gonna just come out and say it. There's a couple games that I had a really tough time with. This Michigan Tampa game, it really comes down to I just trust Tampa's offense more. Both special teams are pretty bad. No matter who Michigan puts out there, I just don't trust that offense, especially with Jeff Fisher as the head coach still to really get much done. I'll take the two with Tampa. Yeah, I kind I'm gonna, of I'm gonna roll with the under though. Yeah, because both these teams, especially Michigan, elite, elite defense. Good defenses. Michigan, for sure, like one of the better defenses in the league, which has made the, had this offensive output even more disappointing. But, yeah, I'm going to roll the under. I'm going to roll Tampa Bay minus the two. I might even do like a little money line parlay for all the teams. I don't know. I love it. Are you going to do a little round robin? A little round robin money line parlay. I might. Anything's on the table. So you we're looking here. I totally agree with you. I'm gonna take the Panthers. I cannot take anything with um with the pan I sorry, I'm gonna take the bandits. I cannot take the Panthers with how shitty their field goal kicker is. I just Yeah, it. special teams are really bad for both these teams. The yeah. kicker the kicking situation is not great for either team. Um I I don't I just can't with this Michigan offense. I can't. I just yeah. cannot get behind him whatsoever. Um. Yeah. So I'm going to take the two, two. So we're going to be on Tampa Bay minus two. You like the under. That's tough. That's a really low total. That's such a low number. And with how Michigan's defense is, like maybe they get a turnover. I could honestly see like a 13-7. That's how that's I believe that's like a very viable realistic score in this game. You know, I think I'm gonna pass. Not not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. I hate doing it. I just hate I hate being that guy. But I think I'm just gonna take the bandits and I'll just pass on the over under. Jim has the under 33 and a half. I have the and we both have the minus two. Next game. I think I think I feel a little bet coming on here, my friend. Maybe, maybe. Possibly. The Breakers and the Generals. 
Generals getting three over under of 37 and a half. What say you, my friend? I have flip-flopped on this all week. This is a, just like the last one. This is a hard spread. This is a very hard one. These are both pretty good teams. I'm going to roll with the Breakers minus the three. I think Kyle Sloter is getting better every week. I think that injury is kind of healing up. I think he had his worst game last week. So they're primed for a good bounce back. He had like way more turnovers than what we're used to. The only thing that kind of makes me hesitant is this general's run defense is the best in the league and their run offense is also the best in the league and what we've seen is teams that can rush and defend the rush are really 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 good there's value on that general's money line but i'm going to take the breakers minus three i think they're the better all-around team and i like their kicking situation a hell of a lot better we have our first disagreement of the show and you know this is going to be the bush light bet number two or schlutz whatever whatever it is i'm going with the generals plus the three i like the running game i think they're going to play the mobile quarterback whose name i'm spacing on deandre johnson baby yep. i think they're going to play him a lot more this game um just I, I i don't know mike riley's done the dual quarterback thing every week he consistently says he's going to do it throughout the season i at this point i'm trusting him at his word i'm gonna take the three i, I like for the points you said, because good run defense, good run game. I'm I can't gonna... fault you. I could very, this could be like a one point game. I just think the breakers are definitively, in my opinion, the most talented team. And I think they, they're going to throughout the season. They're going to prove that. Over under 37. Uh, I think this gets a little pass heavy for the breakers. I'm going to roll with the over here. I like the over here too. I like the over here too. Cause I don't, I think the breakers are going to be able to move the ball through the air. Excuse me. And the generals are going to be able to um, move the ball on the ground. Um, so, yeah, I like I like the generals. Jim likes the breakers. We both have the over 37 and a half. Next game. Whew. It's in that five and a half. Ooh. We got the Ooh. stallions against the stars. Over under 36, and I'm going to say it right now. I'm taking the stars. You know what? I I feel like these numbers shouldn't be this big. No, five and a half is insane to me. I think the Stallions win, but the Stars cover the plus five and a half, and I'm also going to roll with the over. I think I've taken the over in every Stars game so far. I'm going to stick with that. Their defense is not fantastic. The Stallions can always have like a second half surge, like they've done many, many times. And I think this is get this gets pointsy. I, I both defenses not fantastic. Um, both passing games pretty good, and the Stallions just have something magical about them. I'm going to take the Stallions to win, but the Stars cover that five and a half. Now, my question is this: Is that quarterback Jahir, Jahir Smith? Did I say that right? Jamar Jamar Smith. Jamar Smith. Is he going to play with his? Uh, undisclosed element. i think so i think i think i read something that he's been practicing this last week so i think okay. he plays i think even with alex magoo mago out there i'm yeah. gonna just keep calling him magoo i think even with him out there they could still have a second half surge and get the win that that home field advantage is something else oh um, yeah because i mean it's they're it's, the only team that plays with the crowd yeah and it, it's a huge advantage and like you said you made a great point um when they do go up to cannon ohio this, there's the stallions aren't going to have that home crowd, you know, going to be a great time to fade them and play the other team on the money line. Um, I'm going to take the stars here. It looks like we're going to have two Bush light bets this week. No, I'm, I'm on the stars. I'm on the star. Are oh, you on the, the stars, stars to win too. outright? I'm, I'm on bad. the plus five and a half for sure. My bad. I, this screams over to me. Yeah. I'm over, over city. I've taken the over in every single stars game. And that, that trend is not stopping this week. Now this is when old uncle Rico is getting juicy. I'm taking the Maulers plus the five and a half. You know what? I'm taking the plus 210 too. Give it to me. I'm doing both of those as well. This is the Maulers' best chance to win this entire season. The Houston Gamblers look lost. That offense was the worst offense of the week last week. My only worry is the Maulers on odd weeks. They just don't perform. They just don't show up. They just they don't, don't show up. Now, I think they're going to they're gonna stick with Kyle Laletta, D2 legend Kyle Laletta out there at quarterback. I think I obviously I think the Mullers can cover this easily. Now, in terms of your coach rankings, are these the two worst coaches in the league right here? 
maybe. I think Jeff Fisher's got got to be up there too. He's really bad. Kevin Sumlin, I don't know. We expect him to have a way better offense, and it's just not showing. It's not out there on the field. I would say they're definitely bottom three, bottom four. They're like bottom half for sure. And Kirby Wilson especially just seems way over his head. Now, remember when Sumlin was at A&M and everyone thought he was the next offensive genius? Yeah, oh, the good old I days. do remember that. And then they never won more than like nine games. <laughs> the good old days. The good old days. So just to review for everybody. I'm on the under in that game too. Under 34, lock that you're, up. Oh, you're taking the un. Oh yeah, I, my fault. My bad. My bad. So you got the under, the plus five, and the money line. Yeah, I'll take the money line on that. I need I need the win here because I don't know where another one might come. So let's do this. The Maulers win. We're gonna order some Maulers gear. Okay. Okay. Maulers straight up win. We're gonna take our winnings. We're gonna order some Maulers gear. Um, here we're both taking the stars plus the five and a half, and then we're taking the over 36. I like, yeah, I like both those a lot. Uh, there's value in that money line too. If you like the stars quite a bit, I just don't see a team beating the stallions at home. Now here is where we have our disagreement of the week. I'm taking the plus three. Jim is taking the minus three, and we're both going to be on the over of 37 and a half. Oh, yeah. Here, I am passing. I'm using my pass of the week. Jim is taking the under 33 and a half. And we're both taking the minus two. Yes, so sir. That is what we're doing for USFL this week. Excuse me. If um, you want to get cheeky, and it's a very distinct possibility. You could take like all the dogs on the money line, and that wouldn't be a bad move either, though. Like these, a lot of these games are really close. So you know what? If you were to take all the dogs, let's just get a little juicy with it. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Whoa! 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 Hey, whoa! 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 Can't can't be can't be either stalling that that in intel um so if you were to take the dogs i mean you're looking at a plus i'm doing it real quick i got it up for us uh 47 to 1 that's a parlay i mean that that is what we call a juicy parlay in the fucking business a fucking juicy parlay and something i am totally going to be all about um let me ask you this so you know, you're in the heartland of America. I need to ask you this because, you know, it's it's hot here in Chicago. You know what pisses me off? What? When I'm driving and you see these. Now, don't get me wrong. I love bikers. I have my Peloton behind me. You know, I'll, I'll get on it. I'll bike 20 miles on that. I'll get a good workout in. But when you get these guys that think they're goddamn Lance Armstrong. <laughs> You know what I mean? And they're biking in the middle of the lane. Dude, I have no problem sharing the road with you, bro. But share it. But share. You're not fi- – you're, you're you're going like freaking 25. And it's like always like – and I don't mean to stereotype – the middle age overweight man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. that's my pet peeve. They're right? wearing the whole getup. They're like hunched over. They got the helmet. They're all yeah. – they got the gla- they got the goggles usually. Yeah. They're all they're all souped up and yeah, those oh. guys are annoying. I'm all for bicyclists. Like people taking the bikes everywhere. Like this time of year, I only bike around town. Yeah. I but, I love I don't I love biking like I said, but I share the road. I'm yeah, not share the, the road. Of, I'm not in the middle of the goddamn effing lane. I mean, that's just something that just pisses me the f off. Um So, what are we cooking tonight, Jim? Uh I'm gonna be cooking some uh, some Argentinian steak with. Uh, mm. I'm gonna be making a chimichurri along with it. It's gonna be delicious and nutritious. I hope so. I'm hoping for nutrition. Um, so, like I said before, this Jim and I are on BTV, um, doing Spring Fever, talking all the Spring Football leagues. Jim, you have the gymnasium over the weekend, which is great. You give a recap of the. XFL, Jesus, I'm so excited for that. The USFL, 
everything going on this week, I believe you guys are going to be jumping into your team by team breakdown. What team are you starting with first? So we've already done, we've done all of our, so the USFL, we're doing this, the week weekly recaps, but we're also breaking down every single game of every single week of college football and the NFL now with the NFL schedule out. So we already did week zero of college football. So now we're lining up week ones of the NFL and college football together every single game, every single week for both leagues. So, and then you, what other, what, cause you do a lot, man. What, what other stuff do you have planned? So I got that. I have, uh, I do a podcast with these guys from LA uh, called sports hole. We just talk about the most random crazy shit. I just discovered POR wrestling. I'm trying to get in contact with these guys who do backyard deathmatch wrestling. That's awesome. Oh. I want to I want to get in depth with them. And then I I got my USFL like preview show where I go through all the spreads again, uh the final day spreads every Friday and then I also set up a DraftKings lineup because uh they're they're partnered with DraftKings. You could set a USFL DraftKings lineup. And then I just I got my USFL recaps every Tuesday. I recap the whole week. Now, you mentioned the NFL schedule. I don't know if you got a chance to take a look. What are your Dolphins going? I haven't actually looked at it yet, but I'm just going to flat out say I don't care what the Dolphins go. They're going to make the playoffs. They have to make the playoffs. I, you know what? I mean, I'm looking at it right now. New England at home, at Baltimore, Bills at home, at Bengals. At Jets, home against the Vikings. I'm calling one and five to start the season. I'm calling two. I'm calling two and five. They always somehow beat the Patriots. It's weird. Yeah, it is a little funky. It is. Oh, they play at the Bears, dude. Maybe, um, maybe old Uncle Jim will have to come out and hang Ooh. out with old Uncle Rico Ooh. up in Chicago, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't know if the, I don't know if Chicago can handle me and you tearing the city up, though. I don't know if they could. It'd be fun, though. It would be a good time. Jim, thanks for coming on, my man. Always a pleasure. Look forward to talking to you next week. Make sure you guys are following Jim at XFL Jim on Twitch, Instagram. Everywhere. 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 YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all over. Twitter. MySpace. You know, uh, that's AOL.com, everything. All right, man. We'll talk next week, brother. Hell yeah.